What is up, friends? I hope you're well. It's been a while, I know. Every time I make one of these videos, it's just like, where you been? You said you were gonna do this, and you didn't follow through. And yeah, that's the story of my life, so here we are. I didn't want to film today because it's a holiday, but you know how it is. When motivation strikes, when the inspiration hits, when the creativity starts flowing, you just gotta go for it, so here we are. That all being said, thanks for being here. Today's video is five ways to improve your photography. Now these are not all just camera settings that you can change. Some of them are concepts and ways of thinking when you're shooting and looking and framing. Number one, shoot in manual. There's gotta be like at least three videos on YouTube explaining how to shoot manual, so I'm not gonna bother. But I will say manual is the foundation for more advanced photo techniques. Another reason would be that if you are shooting in auto all of the time, you are more than likely going to get shots that you're not happy with, i.e. there's too much blur, there is a lot of overexposure, or you know what, maybe you're going to get a shot that's an absolute passion fruit, grapevine, farm fresh, hand-picked heater, and you don't know why you're getting them because your camera is in auto and everything that you shoot is dictated by what the camera decides should happen. So the knowledge aspect is lost on that. If you want to improve your photography, shoot in manual. If you have the option to, shoot film. Film is a very quick way to learn how to expose properly because nothing lights a fire under you like seeing money drain out of your bank account. Numero dos, slow down. A lot of new photographers, and sometimes pros, will get caught up in the moment of shooting. What I mean by that is they will see something happening in front of them and they will turn their camera on and fire away. By doing that, there's often times that you will have overexposed photos or blurry photos, and that's usually because you didn't take a second to dial in your settings. That being said, if you know you're going to be in a situation where there's going to be some high intense action, motocross, skateboard, fast acting, gymnastics, Olympic sport, football stuff, what you can do is preset your camera settings in anticipation of that situation happening. For instance, if I'm walking down the beach and I know I'm going to hit this one section where all the skaters congregate and do some radical flips, maybe what I'll do is I will tweak my shutter speed and my aperture so that if I see something in that moment and I forget to look down and check and make sure my settings are good, I can just rip my camera up and, and hopefully get something that's probably a lot more close to proper exposure than if not. So yeah, just slow down. Numero tres. Utilize some depth in your photos. A lot of new people, I guess I'm addressing this whole thing to new people, but you know, photographers in general, sometimes pros, sometimes people have been shooting forever. Long-term hobbyists, there we go. A lot of new photographers and long-term hobbyists tend to take photos that capture the entire scene. And by doing that, you often get a flat image or one that is just very boring because there's no single point of interest. Now there's nothing wrong with capturing the whole scene. That's sometimes a really cool way to preserve a memory. However, your eyes don't work that way. When you look at something in front of you in real life, that subject is in focus and everything around it is blurry. If you hold your finger up and you look at it, your entire background is blurry. Now I know this goes against the fundamentals of landscape photography, but having a single point of interest and leaving some aspects of an image blurry, it really is gonna come down to the field and what you're trying to say with your image. A solid way to do that is to, one, utilize a shallow depth of field, or two, shoot through something. If you've got a drone banger of a castle, maybe Photoshop some clouds in the sky. If you're shooting down the coastline, Maybe show some sand in the foreground. Doing something like that is going to add some depth. It's going to feel like, hey, maybe I'm in a plane flying by this castle as I look down. Numero four, shoot at all hours of the day. Don't wait for that juicy golden afternoon light every time you want to go shoot. Shoot in cloudy weather. Shoot at midday. Shoot at night. Just because golden hour has the best lighting doesn't mean you're always going to get to shoot in that. You might go and visit the Grand Canyon and it might be midday and you've got to leave by 4 p.m. and sunset is until 7. And the only photo you're going to ever have for your entire life is at noon o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. The more you shoot in unfavorable conditions like that, the higher chance you'll have of getting a shot that you're actually okay with. Maybe not happy with, maybe not ecstatic about, but you're okay with. It's usable. You could throw it up on the gram and, you know, 
whatever. In the professional world, that happens all the time. You'll plan to go shoot sunrise somewhere, and you know what? You'll get there, model won't get there for another 30 minutes, hair and makeup get there even later, and by the time they're done, it's already like 10. Good lighting's gone, not a cloud in the sky, not a tree nearby, and you've just got to shoot in the most hardest, unfavorable conditions because you also forgot your reflector. Practice makes better. Doesn't make perfect, but it makes better. Practice will make your photos better. Practice good photos. Numero five. This goes along with the last point, and that is don't limit yourself to one specific genre of photography. If you like to shoot landscapes, shoot portraits. If you like to shoot portraits, shoot macro. Can't tell you how many times someone wanted to go shoot with me and my beginner attitude was like, nah, I only shoot landscapes. I don't want to shoot people. And then when opportunities came down the road for me to actually get paid to shoot portraits, I was like, oh snap, I don't know how to shoot portraits because I never shot portraits. And then I had to pass the work along to someone else or I had to show up and sweat because I just wasn't prepared. And you know what? The photos came out really mediocre because I didn't practice. I limited myself. So don't limit yourself. Shoot everything, always, forever, till the day you die. So that wraps up our five tips. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, whatever. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Much love. I'll try and upload some stuff soon. Maybe more stuff like this. So, yeah. Until next time. Two.